Welcome to episode 23 with Miss Shoebridge and Mr. Infant. I'm Eddie and this is Blair. I'm Blair. Uh, what was your first impressions of Scotch? Oh, well, firstly, thanks for having us, boys. Oh, yeah. I um, My first impression, I cheated a little bit because I was a parent here first for three years. So um, my first impression this year has just been a place of really high standards, really friendly people, um, really polite people and a place that's just fun to be at every day. Yeah, there's always something going on at Scotch, whether it be tennis at quarter past seven in the morning or cricket. So I find it a really busy place, but it means that there is something for everyone. If you've got a passion or you've got an interest, you're gonna find it here at Scotch. Both of you have been in education for just a couple of years. Do you have any memorable or funny stories from over the years? I'll jump in, because yeah. mine's very tame, so you can have a think about that. Uh, in probably my first or second year, I was on yard duty in the junior school, not uh, at a very small area school, and uh, our reception kids had to sit down for the first 10 minutes of lunch to eat, and one of the students didn't have his lunchbox, didn't have anything, so I went over to have a chat to him, and... Um, I said, where's your lunch? And he was like, oh, it's in my bag. And I was like, well, go get it. Come on, it's time. Like, this is your 10 minutes to sit down so you're not running around. And he begrudgingly goes over and opens his bag and I'm there with him and he pulls out an echidna. <laughs> what the yeah. hell? So <laughs> what had happened is that he was waiting for the bus in the morning and he was the only kid at the bus stop and he was just by the side of the road and there was just an echidna and he just thought I'll have that and just picked it up and popped That's it in his cute. bag so it was in his school bag until probably one o'clock when it was lunchtime. Was it like all right? It was fine it was absolutely fine we got it out um luckily one of the staff had some experience in dealing with native wildlife they said it was absolutely fine we gave it some food and released it across the road from the school into a big area where it could live its life and we did actually see it a few other times because yeah, it was crazy. So I think it kept coming back for food and water for the first couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, that's very memorable because I don't think I'll ever forget when he started to unzip the bag and there was an actual yeah. echidna sitting in the bag. <laughs> it's not something they forget uh, very easily. Yeah. Wait, so he was at the bus stop. Why didn't yeah. he just go back home and get food? I don't know, mate. I, I, I've got no answers for you. I was the reception this... at the bus stop. That's uh, No, because that's just... Yep, we were in the country. Kids oh, got to get on country, the yeah. kids oh. got to get on the yeah, bus. So no, no, not here. So yeah, yeah, no, that makes more yeah. sense. It does. Yep. So yeah. just saw it and thought, yoink! I will, I will take that to school. <laughs> Didn't bring it out for show and tell. Just uh, wanted to keep it in his backpack. So there you go. That's one I won't forget. So mine's an area <laughs> school one as well. When I first started teaching, I was on the Air Peninsula, an area school. And part of the staff induction was we all had to learn how to use this strange device that was connected to the end of every single building all around the school. And it was a device to hold still king brown snakes for when they decided to come through the middle of the schoolyard in the middle of summer. And so we all had to be taught how to use that device That's in case it happened. Happened once. <laughs> One too many. One too many. Were you ready? <laughs> I was ready. What is the best part of your jobs? Working with kids, absolutely. The best part is watching, and it sounds cliche, but it's the best part is watching you grow, watching you develop, helping pick you up when, you've, when something doesn't go right, being there to celebrate things when they're fantastic, watching you play in bands, play sport on weekends, um, and what, being able to be involved in that over a six-year period. And then after you have taught for a couple of years, as you guys suggested, seeing students down the track and them reaching out and seeing how they've progressed in life and that's what I love. Yeah, I think um, schools are a real sense of community mm. and um, you don't get that in any other workplace where you're dealing with people that are younger, people that are older, it's just and that all in spirit I think is exactly what you get from the best part of your job. But also seeing kids who might be struggling or things like that and getting them to succeed is, is a real big part of my job. So, What does a day in the life of your job look like? Every day is different. So some days 
might be teaching in classroom for a little bit. There could be meetings with students. Um, there's developing um, processes. There's walking in and out of. You know, if I look at today, I've had two student meetings this morning. Dropped in and out of Naplan to make sure that was up and running okay. Uh, had a meeting with another staff member. Have dropped in to play some card games with some kids in CCS. And now we're sitting here doing a podcast. This afternoon I've got a Zoom enrolment interview and then I've got staff Pilates after school. Pretty busy. Yeah, I, I would ditto the fact that no, no two days are exactly the same, but um, I teach three lines, so year seven, nine and ten science, so that keeps me busy. But also trying to catch up with staff about how they're approaching teaching and things like that so I like to discuss how things are going with staff as well as with students so that's kind of what my day looks like. Mr McFarlane do you have any interesting facts about yourself? I once played a game of ice hockey with runners because I couldn't skate so they let me play the game with my runners on that was fun. Did you win? Um, no they were still better than me. <laughs> I was in year 11 no sorry I was in year 12 I was living in Canada going to school and PE, we, get in, we got on a school bus and we went down to the local ice hockey rink. And I tried in the first lesson to play a game in skates and that didn't go so well and I might have got a bit hurt in the ice. And so the next week they said, why don't you just leave your runners on and come and play with those? Mr McFarlane, you mentioned before that you lived in Canada. Are there any other places you'd like to live in? Probably not permanently. I love Adelaide. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I lived in Melbourne for 13 years, I lived in Sydney for three, I lived in Canada for two, and I made a conscious choice to move home to Adelaide four years ago. This place is great. There's plenty of places I want to visit and have holidays in, mm. but I don't want to live anywhere else. If you could design your dream school holiday trip, where would you go? Who with and how and for how long? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I think um, for how long, I mean, how long is a piece of string? I mean, I'd just go uh, visiting forever, but always, exactly what you said, always calling Adelaide base. But um, I would go with, uh, with my family just because they're a riot. They're a good, good group to have, have a good time with. Um, definitely somewhere relaxing at this point. Um, so we've maybe somewhere in the Pacific Islands. That would be nice, I think. Put your feet up. Find a hammock somewhere. Yeah. Sounds like a dream. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I've had my dream holiday, but I'd like to do it again. Oh, where did you I go? I went to the French Alps with Ooh. my family and my mum and dad. And I rented a bike and I rode up and down all the mountain passes for three days. And, but I'd like to do that for maybe three weeks. Sounds And we went into a crepery each day and ordered crepes for lunch and just lived the life of uh, living in a French village and bike riding up and down. Well, the mountains, it was sensational with the, my favourite people on the planet. I think I'd probably get worn out halfway through the riding. <laughs> Where would you guys go? I'm not sure. I like Bali, but yeah. I just want to go to Hawaii because I feel like it's less... In Bali, it's good. Yeah. They've got a lot of good locations, but just when you're out on the streets, there's a lot of, like, just broken potholes and mm. just a lot of gaps in yeah. the pathways but yeah I would love to go to Hawaii Hawaii like somewhere either tropical or like in America or something okay um what are you looking forward to in the next year scotch um I think just getting to know everybody I mean in the first couple of weeks there's over 100 staff to learn their names of I would like to connect with each of the staff just getting a better um, feel for the place about what goes on, where are your big events, those kinds of things, because there's just so much that comes up on a calendar. I think it's um, sometimes you feel like you're just going from one thing to another. So having that predictability is a really good thing. But also having, having those, uh, the first impressions are really important. So I'm also looking forward to doing things again because I'll know what to expect. So like on the first day when you guys did Big Draw, never heard of that, didn't know that was a thing, loved it, thought it was amazing, but now I know what it's about, love to see it that second time around, so I'm really looking forward to those kinds of big things. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. the big events, I can't yeah. wait for Head of the River this weekend. Yeah, so cool. That'll yeah. be great. School of Rock's going to be sensational. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to do my first cross country and go through that creek. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. excited for the creek as well. Yeah. 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 June 14th, yeah. by the way. Oh. Ooh, June 14th. They start training. Diaries. What's your favourite movies? <laughs> My favourite movie is a movie called Princess Bride. Oh, nice. Yeah, good call. Absolute. Best What's movie it, ever. That? When my when my kids got to a, about ten years old, I sat them both down and said, "You need to watch this." And they said, "Why?" I said, "Because it's about love and trust and heroes and adventure and all those great things that movies have." Best movie ever. Yeah, there's a movie called um, Blazing Saddles, which is a, a, a way before your time. So uh, it's a comedic take on the Wild Wild West. And, uh, yeah, very inappropriate. Would not get made in 2024, but there are some, there's some real comic genius in that because it's a Mel Brooks movie who made lots and lots of comedies in the 70s and 80s and probably one of his better movies. Um, it's Year 12 uh, dress-up day for Aussie icons. What would you dress up as? OK, so mine's an old one. Uh, the, the parents watching it will probably remember this person, but I might have to explain to you, I'd be Paul Hogan. <gasps> Good pick. Back I'm in the Paul Hogan know. show days I with the cut off Edna, blue and white shirt I'd, with I'd the love, black stubby I'd love shorts. You with a gladiola as Dame Edna, that would be a good tribute. <laughs> no, but I like Paul Hogan, but I was going to go, yeah, just should, there was a severe lack of cork hats today, I noticed with the year 12, so I would represent and just wear just the hat with the corks. I think that's, uh, that's definitely yeah. iconic Australian. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching. And, See you episode 24. Thanks for having us, boys. Yeah, thank That's you. That's okay.